Whether you are a user of the Ubuntu platform or you just need to test things on Ubuntu from time to time, it can be pretty time consuming to spin up a new VirtualBox virtual machine every time you need to see how something runs in Ubuntu. In this video, I am going to show you guys MultiPass, which will allow you to instantly create disposable Ubuntu VMs for all of your testing needs. So this is probably going to be a quick video because multi-pass is really not all that complex. There's some advanced use cases, but I'm going to show you the basics of how to create a multi-pass VM and destroy it, and also how to, well, connect to it and run commands in it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here I am on the official website for multi-pass. The website URL is this one right here, multipass.run. And as we can see here, it allows you access to instant Ubuntu VMs. And if we scroll down here past all this marketing speak, we can see that it is available for multiple platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, and of course, Linux. Now I'm going to be focusing on this process on Linux. But if you have a Mac or a Windows PC, you can go ahead and download this tool for those platforms. Once you get it installed, the commands to actually use it will be the same on each. Now, first of all, you'll need to have access to the snap command. So if you do which and then snap, you can see here that I do not have access to snap on this machine. It's running Pop OS. So the first thing you'll need to do if the which snap command shows no output is to go ahead and install the components necessary to support snap packages. So if we go back down here to my browser, there's a link that says get your Linux set up for snaps, which will take you to this page right here, which will actually show you the process for various different distributions here. You can see that quite a few are supported. And that's contrary to popular belief that snap packages are specific to Ubuntu. As you can see, that's certainly not the case. Now a snap package is simply a universal package format with all of its libraries and requirements built right into one package. It's more complicated than that, but I'll leave it as simple as that for now. Now, if you do have the snap command at your disposal, you shouldn't need to do this, but if not, Go ahead and click on whichever distribution here matches the one that you are running. In my case, I am running Pop OS, so I'll go ahead and click on that. And basically, according to this, it's as simple as sudo apt update and sudo apt install snapd. So I'll go ahead and bring the terminal back here. Let's go ahead and run those commands. So first of all, sudo apt update. That will refresh the repositories here. We'll ignore the fact that I have 100 packages that can be upgraded. And we should be ready to install snapd. So sudo apt install snapd. So now that snapd is installed, we can check the status with systemctl status snapd. And you should see that it is active and running in green like mine is right here. And again, you may want to make sure that this is enabled. We should be good to go to go ahead and install MultiPass. If you run into any problems, go ahead and reboot your computer because it is the case that sometimes there are some things that need to be refreshed. There are different moving components with SnapD that all need to fall into place. So now let's go ahead and install MultiPass. So we will run sudo snap install dash dash classic MultiPass and then press enter. Go ahead and let this run. So that took a little while, but we should have access to the multi-pass command now. So you could do which multi-pass and see if you get any output. And I don't in my case. So what I'm going to do is log out and log in and see if that fixes it. 
Okay, so I've gone ahead and logged back in. Let's go ahead and check whether or not I have access to the multi-pass command now. And there it is. To be fair, I had access to it all along, but I needed to log out and log in in order for PATH to update since I just installed SnapD, but we see that we have multi-pass installed. That's the full path to that right there. And we should be able to go ahead and run it. Now you might run into a permissions error when you run this command, but I'm going to try to do this without sudo and we'll see if it works. So the syntax is multi-pass, launch, dash dash name, and we need to give our new Ubuntu instance a name. I'll just call mine Ubuntu VM. And then you press enter. It tells us that it's creating the VM and it's retrieving the necessary image. Now, according to this, I went ahead and launched the Ubuntu VM that I told it to create. But I wanted to mention if you ran into any permissions errors when you tried to run this, you might have to add your user to a specific group. That might vary from one distribution to another. You could try sudo, although I don't like sudo. But on CentOS, for example, I was able to resolve that issue by simply adding my user to the ADM group, and then I was good to go. So now with that out of the way, the multi-pass command gives us multiple subcommands that we can use in order to manage our virtual machine installations. If I press enter without any options, it's going to give us a basically a cheat sheet here that has all of the common commands that you can use with multipass. Now we've already used multipass launch, which is this one right here. We also have list as well. So I could do multipass list. So that will give us a list of all of the virtual machines that were created through multipass. We also have multipass stop if we want to stop an instance. So I'll give it the name of the instance I want to stop. It's going to stop that instance and then with list, we can see that the state is currently stopped. And as you could probably guess, we could simply change stop to start. And if I list it again, we can see that now the virtual machine is running. So now you should have multi-pass installed and running, and you should be able to create a VM through it and also start and stop that VM as well. I'm going to show you how to interact with your multi-pass virtual machine, but before I do, I wanted to mention my sponsor, Linode. I've trusted Linode for over two and a half years as my infrastructure provider. Along the way, I've used them for all sorts of things, like my web server, for example. The wiki for this YouTube channel is also hosted on it, and I also use it for quite a few of the tutorials that you've enjoyed on my channel recently. I recommend Linode because it's simple to use, has affordable capped pricing that just makes sense, and reliable 24 by 7 support available by phone or support ticket. If you're a Linux power user, your server customization options are all but limitless. Even if you are just starting to learn, you can use Linode's growing list of one-click installations to easily get a site, app, or service up and running in the cloud. To get $20 in credit toward your new Linode account, use promo code LearnLinux19 at sign up, or just visit the URL that you see on your screen right now. I appreciate Linode's continuing support of my channel, and now let's get back to multipass. Now, one thing that we can do with our multipass VM is to launch individual commands. To do that, we'll use multipass exec, and then the name of the virtual machine we want to run a command in, but then a space, two hyphens, and another space. And then the command that I want to run inside Ubuntu VM is this one. This will be interesting. And then I'll press enter. And it executed cat against the file slash etsy slash os release, which is a file that includes information about the distribution. As we can see here, it's currently running 1804.3. 
So basically, if you don't ask for any specific version of Ubuntu when you launch, you will get the latest LTS release by default. Now to compare this, I could do cat against Etsy OS release on my host system here, and we can see that it is running Pop! OS 1910, which is obviously different than what we saw when we ran that same command inside the virtual machine. Now in my case, I'm using my laptop, but I have an SSH session open to my desktop, which is where I'm running this. And that's just because I was having some issues with virtualization support and I'm too lazy to reboot my laptop. But anyway, you can see here that the results that we received from the virtual machine are different than the results that we receive if we run that from the host system itself. So I've shown you how to run individual commands, which is great if you want to run a one-off command to test something. But I think it would be more useful to open a shell to the virtual machine so that you can continue to run commands. And that's actually pretty easy. All we have to do is multipass shell and then the name of the virtual machine instance, Ubuntu VM in my case. And now we have an actual command shell inside the virtual machine. So without any special parameters, if I simply cat Etsy OS release like I did earlier, you can see sure enough, we are inside the virtual machine. And now you can run any commands that you can run in any other Ubuntu installation, like sudo apt update, for example. We can install our updates. Just like any other Ubuntu instance. And of course, I can have a little bit of fun, for example. So sudo apt install kause. Pretty stupid example, but it's fun. And then inside this virtual machine, I can run kause learn linux.tv. And we have a cow that is talking about the URL to my website. But you get the idea. You could basically install whatever application you want to run inside this virtual machine. You can test your scripts do some coding and development or whatever you want to do with an Ubuntu instance. And I could press Control D to exit back to the host prompt. And then when I'm done, I can simply do multi-pass delete. And then when I am all done, I could do multi-pass stop. Then the instance name here, which I've already shown you, and it is stopped. And then I can go ahead and delete it if I don't need it anymore. just like that with the delete keyword. And then I'll go back to the list. We can see that the state is deleted. And if I want to clean up the list of VMs and get rid of the deleted VMs, then I could simply do multi-pass purge. And then if I check the list, it's completely gone. And now that multi-pass is set up on my machine, anytime I need a quick Ubuntu VM, I can launch an instance very quickly do whatever I need to do, and then destroy it when I'm done. It's a very useful utility, especially if you are doing software engineering and you want to see how your code performs inside of a Linux VM. It's definitely a very useful tool to have at your disposal. So there you go. That was my tutorial on multipass. I think it's a pretty cool and useful utility for one-off tests or whatever you might need an Ubuntu VM for. It's pretty cool. Let me know what you think of this utility in the comments below. And as always, I am recording some awesome content for you guys that I hope to have edited very soon. So if you haven't already done so, like and subscribe, and I'll see you again real soon.